Animal trypanosomiasis, known as Nagana or sleeping sickness, is a disease of vertebrates. This disease infects the blood of the vertebrate host, cattle causing fever, weakness and lethargy, which leads to weight loss and anemia. In some animals, the disease may prove fatal unless treated. This one is specifically for trypanosomiasis because we are able to go and centrifuge that uh, capillary blood and we get a layer of parasites. And when we put them under the microscope, we are able to identify even if it's only one parasite in that blood. We also use the capillaries, the, the ear, and we can collect it from the same, from the same punch. And this one shows, and this one shows now the capillary with the blood. These capillaries are specific because they make the, the blood not coagulate. It is called heparinized uh, capillaries. So if you need to take that blood, you have to pick it from us or take uh, heparinized capillaries. After you are through, you are supposed to press using a disinfectant, press where you have punctured so that you don't introduce infection to the animal. Aside from collecting milk samples, farmers can call vet doctors to collect blood samples. This will assist in testing for internal diseases and pests such as tapeworms and intestinal diseases. This process usually calls for the collection of blood, fecal material and serum sample to test for antibodies in an animal system. We have two types of blood. We have whole blood, which we can use to look for parasites. And we have serum, which we use to look for antibodies. And these are the body fighting mechanisms uh, that, I, that shows there was a certain disease in that animal. The containers are labeled in such a way that you can know which one is for blood and which one is for serum. So if you see this one with a, a purple top, it is used for whole blood. In this case, it is called vacutaneous. The tube has no air, such that if you enter a blood vessel, it will just suck blood very fast into the tube. The first thing is you disinfect the, 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 the area that you are going to pick the blood, identify the blood vessel as he's doing, then open the, the needle, press the, the tube and press and blood will just be sucked by that tube. We don't require a whole bottle. We require just about 5 ml to 10 ml. And as I said, this one can be used for examining parasites. And it is taken by a qualified uh, animal health service provider. The, the serum, the same. We use the same method. After that, you have to cross the, and disinfect. This one is on the higher side, this one is on the lower side. We normally like it in the middle here, about 8 to 10 ml. We put it in a slanting position so that the serum can start correcting. Otherwise, if we are in the field and we might not be able to correct it, we can go with, the, with it to the laboratory and we centrifuge it and we will separate the serum. So basically, these are the samples that are taken by a qualified animal health service provider. There are other samples that the farmer can take for himself. And one of them is the fecal material. You find that the animal is getting thin and you are deworming it and it is still getting thin. And you suspect that it could be having things like worms. You can be able to take a fecal material. So in that case, you are supposed to put something protective like a graph or a paper, an iron paper. And you come to the back and then you will insert two fingers and move them a bit to stimulate defecation so that the animal will feel like it is defecating or it has the urge to defecate and it will push the feces behind and you will be able to collect just about four or five grams and you will be able to press them in a bottle. You can press it in a bottle. If you don't have a bottle, you can use the same plastic material that you had put in your head, collect some, some material in it, and then wrap it like that, and then tie it so that you don't go spreading it. Then 
you will bring it to the laboratory. So this one can be taken by a farmer himself, but the others we have shown have to be taken by a qualified animal health service provider. In cases where cattle, goat or sheep has a skin disease, a farmer can scrap the skin and take a sample to the lab for further screening. So that is how a skin scraping is taken with a sharp blade and you scrape, scrape, scrape until you see almost some blood oozing. For this case, it is a confirmed case of dermato dermatophilus. In, it is also known as, as streptothricosis and it is treatable using penicillin injection. After sample collection and taking to the lab for testing, technologists at RVIL will do a thorough screen test and have the results for a farmer within five days after sample submission. Today, Dr. Morega takes us through a farmer's results, which was submitted to the RVIL labs from a cattle herd near Lake Solai area. She will advise and explain to the farmer on the findings from the sample and how to treat and manage their cows. At the laboratory, sometimes farmers report that there is a disease outbreak. That is a disease that is occurring more frequently than it normally occurs, or it is occurring in higher numbers than it, it normally occurs in that area, or it is a new disease that they have not seen. When they do that, we organize ourselves together with the county government staff who are in charge of animal health at the county level, and we come and carry out an investigation, and then we come and give back the results. For example, in this area with the animals you can see, it was reported that the animals are getting thinner, they are losing body condition, despite the fact that they are also feeding them well. So we decided to come and do an investigation, and we took quite a number of samples. One of them we took was capillary blood to check for trypanosomiasis, because this area is likely to have trypanosomiasis because of the vegetation, the way you can see. This is where sassafras can inhabit. We also took uh, fecal material to check for worms, and especially river fruits, because you can see beh behind me is a Lake Sorai. There is normally a swamp area, and the fruits, especially the vectors that uh, transmit the, the, the fruits, the snails, they like water, watery or marshy areas. So we went and took and examined those samples. We took them this week. And here I am bringing the results. We took for a number of farmers. For example, this farmer is a Cherono, Cheboy. And we found that uh, her animals, one of the animals, had anaplasmosis, that is a tick bone disease. Unfortunately, the same animal is the one that had uh, liver fruits and also it had a skin disease, streptothricosis. So now we are advising her to buy the medicines uh, for liver fruits. We recommend a drug called nitroxenil, which is 34% uh, an injectable drug. And uh, for the anaplasmosis, we recommend tetracycline, injectable. And for the skin disease that we call streptothricosis, we recommend injectable penicillin. These ones can all be given by a qualified animal service health provider. For anaplasmosis, which is a tick bone disease, we have advised, uh, we are advising on tick control measures. And for streptothricosis, it's unavoidable. It just comes on when there is a wet season, when it is wet. But when you spray your animals, the, para, the, the vectors, like the fries that tra can transmit it from one animal to the other one, if it is sprayed with the calicides, they can also, uh, the, the fries can also be killed. So I would like to give this one the report to the owner. You may reserve a ugonjwa ya minyo ya maini, na kuna hiyo digana, na kuna hiyo ingine ya gozi, hiyo si matope ni uonjwa. Kwa hivyo nimekuadikia dawa zote za kweda kutibu, lakini hizi ni daktari ya takuja kutibu. Hawezi kujidugia. Foot and mouth disease is a severe 
highly contagious viral disease of cattle and pigs. It also affects sheep, goats and other hoof ruminants. The disease spreads very quickly if not controlled. Animals with foot and mouth disease have a fever and blister on their tongue and lips, in and around the mouth, on the mammary glands and around the hooves. The animals experience pain and discomfort from the vesicle and erosions, leading to other symptoms such as depression, aneroxia, excessive salivation, lameness and reluctance to move or stand. Although animals are less likely to die, they are prone to being weak and unable to attain their previous milk and meat production. This is foot and mouth. You can see the way the gums are eroded. This one is lucky the tongue is clean. It doesn't have the, the infection, but you, you have seen these woods. Eh? You can see this. Eh? This is now foot and mouth. This is the mouth part of the infection. In one cow, there is in between, you can see the wet, wetting of this. In between, that wetting is in all the, the hooves. And it's, this is the, the foot part of the foot and mouth. It is called foot and mouth because it affects the mouth, the woods you can see, and also affects the foot. Sometimes it might get infected with secondary bacterial infection and it can start swelling. Like the other side is a bit swollen. And that is why we give them an antibiotic cover. Foot and mouth disease is one of the toughest animal diseases to control. When an outbreak occurs, the disease spreads rapidly to all regions of the country through routine livestock movements. Farmers can simply use a remedy at their farms to treat foot and mouth disease. They can use magadi, a salt that kills bacteria and viruses, by applying to the wounded mouth parts. Since the medicine is bitter, they will soothe the pain by applying molasses to the animal's mouth. For feet, farmers can apply GV, a purple liquid that hardens the wound and kills the bacteria. With the spread of diseases during cold and warm seasons, farmers should take up hygiene of animals seriously. Small-scale and large-scale farmers have the option of using cattle dips to clean their animals or spray them weekly to keep them free of pests. Diseases such as foot and mouth, brucellosis and trypanosomiasis among others should be tested from the animals whenever there is rumored to be an outbreak. Farmers must involve vet doctors, extension officers and lab services from their farming activity to keep tabs of the healthy animal for a successful farming venture. For more interesting stories and knowledge on dairy farming, tune in to KTN Farmers TV.